My weapon is a melody, and I shall sing a little louder, because he is the king who still sits on the throne. This is Rise and Pray, Lives Depend on It. Thank you for joining us on this devotional Tuesday. This is the day we set aside for a moment to read a devotional that through the leading of the Holy Spirit will align us to the will of the Father. We we greet you all with the love of Christ, and remember you're not alone. We are in this together. Let's go to the throne of grace. Dear gracious and eternal Father, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus, asking you to wash us and cleanse us, God. God, we got so much on our minds right now, God. It's early in the morning. We got work on our mind, our children on our mind, our spouses on our mind. We got so many things bombarding our thought process right now, but you got an on-time word for us, God. A word, Father God, that is going to set us free from all doubts and worry and fear, God. And we just asking you today, Father God, that you would saturate the atmosphere. Bring us back into alignment to your will right now in this morning, God. Help us to hear a word from you and only you, Father God. You change the way we think that we can sing a little louder, that we can sing Speak your words, Father God, freely, Father God, because whom the sun sets free is free indeed, Father God. And we're reclaiming our territory on this day, God. We're reclaiming, Father God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We have to re- re- reclaim it in this season, Father God. And that means sometimes we got to get a little bit louder and we got to keep singing that melody, God. So we ask you today to anoint us, Father God. Each and every one of us, Father God, anoint our ears, Father God, and help us speak, thus say yes, the Lord, on today. We're coming out of Isaiah 51, 8 through 16 in the Message Bible. Isaiah 51, 8 through 16 in the Message Bible. It's an easier read. But you, Israel, are my servant. Put your name there. But you, Israel, are my servant. You're Jacob, my first choice, descendants of my good friend Abraham. I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you you're my servant, serving on my side. I've picked you. I haven't dropped you. Don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on you. Count on it. Everyone who had it in for you will end up out in the cold, real losers. Those who work against you will end up empty-handed, nothing to show for their lives. When you go out looking for your old adversaries, you won't find them. Not a trace of your old enemies, not even a memory. That's right. Because I, your God, have a firm grip on you, and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. Do you feel like a lowly worm, Jacob? Don't be afraid. Feel like a fragile insect, Israel? I'll help you. I, God, want to reassure you. The God who buys you back, the Holy of Israel. I'm transforming you from worm to harrow, from insect to iron, as a sharp Sharp-toothed harrow, you'll smooth out the mountains. Turn those tough old hills into loomy soil. You'll open the rough ground to the weather, to the blast of the sun and wind and rain. But you'll be confident and exuberant, expansive in the holy of Israel. That was Isaiah 41, 8 through 16 in the Message Bible. Fear. 
Fear is a powerful weapon the enemy uses against the saints. This one of this was one of the weapons used to penetrate Job's hedge of protection, Job 3 and 25. It is actually used to perforate and penetrate our faith. Fear has a diversity of expressions, but 1 John 4 and 18 says, there is no fear in love, per but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear, the Holy Spirit was um, stirring me up all night long. And he said that the people are full of fear. And he said, fear is affecting your health. Fear is affecting your sleep, your eating habits, and your relationships. Fear has zapped your enthusiasm. God says to us all today, fear not. Fear not is our devotional reading. Let me get to it. In Isaiah 41 and 10, let me try to put it all together for you. The God who judges all the earth and calls the coastlands to give an accounting, the God who rules over the rulers of the nations, the God who calls the nations into being, the God who calls his people from the nations and elects them for himself, that God says to you this morning, I am your God. I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And only now does he say, therefore. Therefore, because I judge the nations. Therefore, because I rule the rulers. Therefore, because I call nations into being. Therefore, because I choose my own freely. Therefore, because I am your God. Therefore, because I am with you. Therefore, because I help you. Therefore, because I strengthen you. Therefore, because I uphold you. Therefore, for the rest of your life, do not be afraid. It isn't hanging in the air as a burden. It's a doorway into a life of freedom on massive pillars of divine enablement. Let me change the image if I may. God, please get it home to you. Try five prepositions or five factual relationships that God has to you. Number one, I am your God. That, that is, I am above you. I am over you with my mighty hand. Number two, I am with you, beside you. Number three, I will help you from whatever angle the enemy may come or the attack or the threat. I am all around you as your help. Mm. Number four, I will strengthen you from inside out. I will be your strength. Number five, and I will uphold you from underneath you. I am over you, I am beside you, I am all around you, I am inside of you, I am under you. You don't need to fear. You don't need to be afraid. Choose your image. Do not be afraid. There is one great ground for fearlessness, God. There is one great ground for fearlessness, God. I am your God. I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. I only have one message. If you have God, you don't need to be afraid. 
And I call you this morning to believe that the most crucial factor in the future of your fearlessness is not your family of origin. It's your God. I call you to be free from the limitations that so many put upon yourself in a kind of fatalistic rootness in where you've come from. You have a God who is infinitely more powerful than anything in your past, and he can break whatever bondages you feel to be in because of it. The Bible holds up a God who is stronger than your personality, who is stronger than your past track record of timidity, who is stronger than your perceived identity as a nobody, who could ever accomplish anything with courage for God. And I plead with you to accept the fact that it is God who makes the difference and not you or your parents or your friends. It is God who makes the difference. I just appeal to the one among you right now who feels absolutely and totally inadequate to do anything of worth this week. I appeal to you to stop thinking about your inadequacy and why you've got to be that way. And I plead with you to look at God. He is God. He is God. He is God. He is God. Do you believe in him? Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. John 14 and 1. Father God, we thank you so much for this word. We needed a reminder that you are God. You are bigger than our fears. You are bigger than our circumstances. You are bigger than what's going on all around us in this world, Father God. You are bigger than even death, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that there is a new earth and a new heaven, Father God. And we stand on that and we trust you, Father God, that we have purpose in this season, God. That, Father God, that you're not going to let the enemy but do so much, Father God. And, Father God, we've been isolated. We've been tormented. We've been feeling hopeless, hopeless, God. But today is the day that you're going to break that, God. And even those that are sitting around and saying, I'm not fearful, Father God. Some of us have suppressed it, Father God, for over a year, God, the fear that wants to come up on us, God, that we can't even feel anymore. We're numb to the pain. We're numb to the hurt. We've lost so many people that we're numb, God, in the name of Jesus, God. So I'm asking you today to show us, God. Speak to each and every one of us. We're vulnerable before you. We're transparent before you, Father God, because we got to get rid of this fear because we got to move forward in purpose, God. And we need you to break this bondage, God. We need you to break the worry and the anxiety and the sleepless night, God. We don't need to take anything to go to sleep anymore, Father God. We need you to take the self-medication away, Father God. We need you to take away the pain, God, in the name of Jesus. We got to feel the moment, God, that we can be healed, God. So we're asking you today by the power of the Holy Ghost, you be the counselor. You be the great physician, Father God. And you get to the root of this fear, Father God. We know that there's so much going on with the white supremacist, God. We know there's so much going on with the infighting in our country, God. We know there's a lot going on in other countries, God. And we feel the times, Father God. We feel the earth groaning, God, in the name of Jesus. But I thank you, the new earth and new heaven is not a reason to fear, God, in the name of Jesus. We're fearing about our children. We're fearing about the education system. We're fearing, Father God, about them being isolated. But there's nothing new under the sun, God. Many have gone through isolations. Many have gone through wars, God. World War One, World War II, God. Our ancestors who descended from slavery as we celebrate, Father God, Black History Month, God. They've been through hell and high water. This is nothing compared to what they went through, God. And we owe them, Father God, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Help us to be courageous, God, in this season, God. Shift the atmosphere, God. Oh, God, we got to get an emotional healing, God. Some of us need an emotional healing, God. We're anxious and we're making everybody around us anxious, God. We're so worried about the little things, the minute things, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to wake up every morning and celebrate life, life more abundantly, Daddy God. Help us, God, to be full of the Holy Ghost, God. When fear creeps 
in hospice, God. Some of us, Father God, know that there's somebody in our family who got days to live, God, and it's overwhelming us, God. But I'm asking you to strengthen us, God. I'm asking you to give us an anointing, God. Oh, God, comfort your people, God, because you are God. You're here to strengthen us. You are God, God. You are above us. You are in control, God. So we let go, Father God, of that control and manipulation, God. And we let go of our thoughts and our expectations, God, knowing, God, that you called us for such a time as this, God. This is the time that the anointing is going to rise up, God. And so we're trusting and believing in you that we claim it to be so. We declare it to be so. We shall not fear. Fear not, the Lord says on today. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Have a beautiful day.